Okay, in 4 h and H back in the shack, ready to put on a PL259 uh, Amphenol here. I prefer Amphenol. I bought these as a, a kit, so you get the reducer for RG8X, so I won't be using that. So here we go, open this up. Oop, drop the reducer anyway. Okay, I'll put that away. So here is the end of the LMR 400 that I cut off. I'm going to uh, take my knife and just cut this extra rubber piece off that's left over from the seal that they put on it. Okay, one of the very first things you wanna do, and this one's actually put on backwards, but um, you just want to get the, uh, uh, there we go, get the part that you tighten taken off. And the first thing you want to do is put that down the coax with the knurled part, the rough part that you grip, facing the end that you're going to put the PLT-59 on. Now, this is the way I learned to do it at Motorola, so I'll just do it this way here. I'm putting the PLT-59 next to the coax and what i want to do is i want to trim the rubber of the coax or the plastic um, pvc what have you uh, back to right where the threads are right here where these threads are see there so i'm going to put my put a little indention there with my thumb and i'm going to cut around that Yep, I'm beginning to see the shield down there. I'm just barely wanting to cut through here. Just enough to break the rubber, but not shield. LMR 400 is stiffer than RG8, so you have to be uh, more deliberate here in what you're doing. At the same time, do not cut the shield okay I think I've got enough of it I can uh, I can start what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little line down the middle here with a knife score it and try to peel that back there we go so that exposes the shield now <laughs> the next thing we're gonna do we're gonna go back to the connector itself and verify, yeah, that's about right. So the, this will go up to where the threads are. And now I'm going to tin this with some solder. Tin this shield all the way around. So now one of the things that'll help is use a little bit of the uh, flux here. So I'll put a little flux around there. Okay, flux, I've had that for years. Uh, Kester SP30. Okay, now I'm gonna take a pistol iron and I've had this since I was, uh, well, since I first got into electronics as a, as a child, really. I mean, I guess I was around 11 and my dad bought this for me. You wanna use a, a pistol iron because you're gonna need maximum heat so you don't have to stay on it so long before you, uh, you know, you'll melt it. If you try to use an iron that doesn't have enough heat, you might begin to degrade the, um, uh, the insulation, the, uh, the dielectric here inside, what separates the shield from the center conductor. So you don't wanna use a pencil iron. You gotta use something that's got some serious heat to it this is uh in the you got two positions and in the second position it's 140 watts in the first position it's 100. Um, they make some that'll give you 350 watts and that's even better okay so now i'm going to do the tinning
I have to work my way all the way around. Don't need to tin all the way out to the end, by the way, because we're going to be cutting that off. But I do want to tin a little bit farther than uh, where I'm going to cut. And this will make sense in a minute. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to do when, when I cut, I've, I've brought the coax in only up to the length that I need it. So it's actually uh, not the most ideal way to handle the coax. Now, those of you who have a background in Citizens Band, you may have seen people just take the shield and fold it back over the rubber part and then just screw the PL259 on there. And that may be okay for, you know, four watts, 11 meters, but, uh, you know, especially when you're getting into higher frequencies, you wanna, you wanna do this this way. But I, I do it for HF or anything because I want a very strong connection. All right, so now I'm going to take my knife. Verify my, my cut point. Now this time where I want to cut is going to be, okay, I hope you can see that. Let me look at the camera to make sure you can see that. So I'm going to cut here so that I'm basically leaving a, about as much shield as there is a gap here. Because you see those holes? We're going to be putting solder through those holes. So I'm going to actually take my knife now and I'm going to cut through the shield right there. All right. I'm going to make a score mark. And I will tell you, <laughs> at, when I worked at Motorola, we had, I had a knife that it wasn't exceptionally sharp, but it wasn't completely dull. It was, a, a, I think, a, well, I can't remember the brand, but you know, it was one of those with a wooden handle. And it, its only purpose in life in my toolbox was for what you see me doing right here, because this is tough on a knife. I don't do it for a living anymore, and I don't know what happened to that knife, so... I don't, um, I'm just using, I'm, I'm punishing my little Swiss Army knife here, really, doing this. I may have to go get another knife. Hold on. Okay, I was able to get it with the Swiss Army knife. It just took a little more effort, but there we go. And I'm just going to pull the rest of that off. It, by the way, it just kind of rotates off because of the wire spiraling inside. So don't just try to pull it straight off. You may have seen me, I kind of thumbed it a little bit and rotated that off. Okay, um, now it looks like this. Let's double check. So you see, the amount of shield that I left matches up with that gap where the holes are. Now I'm going to do one more thing. I'm gonna tin this area here so that it'll be ready for soldering inside for the center conductor. Heat up the iron. Now you know when soldering, the idea is not to melt the solder and get it to stick to the surface. The idea is to heat the, the substrate or you know the, the thing that you want to solder, heat it, and then let the solder melt to it. That way you will prevent what we call a cold solder joint. Okay, the end is all I really need to tin. That's enough right there. And um, now I'm gonna check the length of the end. Um, yeah, it looks like it might stick out just a little bit far, so I'm gonna clip just a little bit of the end off. There we go. Now, put the connector over it and then 
there are some threads inside of here that will grip that rubber as you screw it on, or the PVC in this case. And again, don't forget, before you go screwing that on, make sure that the outer ring here that you uh, tighten with is already on the coax with the knurled part that, that you grip toward the end where the connector is, okay? Let me raise the camera a little bit there. All right. So all I'm doing now is just using my hand pressure to screw this on. And I'm looking inside the holes and I'm beginning to see the shield that is tinned. There we go. Now I'm looking through the hole and I can see I can see through the hole here all the little tin, uh, the, the, the shield that it has solder already on it. So now I'm going to put a little bit more of the, this is optional, but it just helps. It'll, it makes it a little bit easier. Put a little of the uh, flux there. And now if I can get this coax to stay put, heat up the iron. And this time I want the I want the uh, connector to heat up, and it's going to take a little more heat. This is why you use a, a pistol iron. All right, there we go. That should be getting pretty hot now. I'm just going to hold it there, just test it a little bit. So since the shield inside is already tinned, what should happen as this connector heats up is the solder here should just start melting into the hole. And it's doing so. And then it will melt the solder that's on the shield. And that's what it'll look like. Oops, let me get that in the camera. Hope you can see that. All right, and now I'm gonna work my way around. Let me see if I can get some more light on this. Okay, so you can see that the solder there, see the hole, right? See the solder is molten there and is connected to the shield on the inside. Here's a hole. Um, See if we can get that in focus. See, that one's not been done yet. So I'm going to work my way around and, and do the other three. Again, heating the connector and then letting the solder flow into the hole and melt the solder that's on the shield. Okay, so all four sides are soldered now. And as you heat this up, some of the first holes that you soldered, the solder might run a little bit. Just go back around and neaten it up. And... Uh, and then uh, you're going to work your way around to the end here. So let me see there. The uh, center conductor is sitting right in there, tinned and ready to go. So I will solder that now. One of the reasons I like Amphenol connectors, that um, insulator there, the material it's made out of can take heat. Some of the cheaper PL259s have plastic in there and they'll melt when you uh, start to heat this tube here for the center conductor. All right, so I'm gonna heat that up and put my solder in there. When the solder starts melting, yep, yeah, there we go. I will check it. And this is going to be one where ultimately before you totally finish this one, you want to aim the connector down just slightly so that the solder beads up on the end. Now you might accidentally get some on the barrel of it, so you want to check that too. 
Now what I'm gonna do, let it cool here for a few seconds. I'm gonna take my knife and go around and scrape any solder residue, also any of the flux from the solder. Yeah, I got a little, little spot of solder right there that built up. Came off the tip probably from the other spots. Now let's take a look at the end and see how it looks. Yep. Okay, see the end? So that's good. It's okay if it balls up a little bit there too, but that's good enough. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, heat it any more than I need to. Okay, so that is how you install a PL259. And we're ready to plug this into the back of my antenna tuner and test my ZSX BKW. Thanks a lot for watching. And hey, if you would, please like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel. If you want to help out to keep this kind of content coming, you can become a Patreon at the address on the screen, the uh, patreon.com forward slash in 4 h and Again, thanks for watching. Hope you found this helpful and informative. 73 from N4H&H.